Since I think I have to do it once more, let, it, it takes two minutes, we'll play it, and I'll find out what's wrong, I say the uh, right thing to them. I got to know and work with Johnny Williams on Star Wars because of Steven, who had recommended him from Jaws, and, and uh, you know, it was great. You know, it was, th that's the most fun part of making a movie for me, because you don't have to do anything, you just sit back and listen, and it's all, and with Johnny, it's just fantastic. I've been very fortunate to, to work with both George Lucas and Steven Spielberg, because in the case of both of those gentlemen, they are interested in music and use it in a very theatrical way that gives the music an opportunity to project itself and gives me an opportunity to write in a thematic way that wouldn't be possible in all kinds of films. The first hitch is too first heavy. Too heavy. Think, yeah. Too oh, heavy yeah. Let me let me just uh, okay. react to what we've heard. About. John, you know, he he actually written two Raiders themes. He had written <laughs> play that for me. Which I freaked out over. I loved it so much. Then he said, and here's another possible Raiders score, uh, Raiders main theme, and he played. And and so he had had two choices, and I think my only input was to say, can't you use both? And he did. He made the latter the bridge, and he made the former the main theme. That's a perfect example of the kind of collaboration that we have we have done with these things. Interesting about that, da 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 dee, da da da. A very simple little sequence of notes, but I spend more time on those little bits of musical grammar to get them just right so that they seem inevitable, seem like they've always been there, they're so simple. And I don't know how many permutations I will go through with a six note motif like that, one note down, one note up, and spend a lot of time on these little simplicities which are often the hardest things to capture, I think, for anybody. Good morning. The first piece is 13-4-14-1. When I wrote the music for Raiders of the Lost Ark, I think I understood that that was to be the first in the series. And I didn't know where this love story was going to go, if, if anywhere, you know. But I thought that there was a real spark between the two of them, and a real sort of potential love story was there. But I thought the music were lyrical and, and emotional and warm and the orchestra could sing this love theme even if we didn't have love love scenes that it might be permissible to interject that kind of musical emotion in, in their relationship these films do present a, a wide range of musical challenges We go to great lengths to, to frighten the audience and use sometimes advanced orchestral techniques, uh, atonal music, which would be more akin to contemporary concert music, Bartok and others. And uh, people, if they heard the music without the film, might be shocked by it. But for me and for the orchestra also, it's a pretty exciting challenge to do, to be still on the right pace with what we see and hear and feel. So those things are terrific fun to do. Fun in this sense also. I mean, we have the Nazis, you know, and, and the orchestra hits these 1940s dramatic chords, you know, the seventh, on the seventh degree of the scale on the bottom, which is like a kind of an old signal of some evil militaristic doer. Good evening, Fraulein. We just unabashedly did that just for the fun of it. I mean, for the camp fun of it. And uh, it's, it's admissible, it seems, in the style of a picture like this. The role of the orchestra at the end of the Raiders of the Lost Ark film is a complicated one because the music has to perhaps lure us into something that's sonically that's going to say this is going to be a beautiful experience and then and then torture it and turn it around with the sound effects into something that could be quite terrifying. It's something that we, we would do in opera. Uh, it's part of the grammar and part of the technique of a composer and an orchestrator's tools to manipulate sound in that way, to lure us into one place and then deliver something else in the process. 
the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark, a very good example of, of, of that kind of sonic transformation. <laughs> In the case of the three Indiana Jones films, uh, the experience for me was very much like the experience of doing the Star Wars series, in the sense that, that one seemed to be the, con the natural continuation of the other, and it's sort of like riding a bicycle. I didn't have to relearn how to do it. I, I began to begin to work, and within an hour or two, I was back into the rhythm and into the spirit of the piece somehow. <laughs> nice try, Lao Shea! Goodbye, Dr. <laughs> also, we have the hero's theme, which is common to all three films, so the starting point is always enhanced by having the given musical subject from an earlier film. Temple of Doom was exactly what George wanted. It was Indiana Jones, you know, you know, sort of goes to hell and, uh, and then returns to fight and li love another day. And uh, Johnny saw it, and I think he reacted appropriately. You know, dark and strange with all the choral, the dark male chorus, with all the stuff happening inside the actual Temple of Doom itself. John did an amazing score and really brought the movie up in my eyes. And uh, I love his Trek music. I love the, the kind of Trek score where the elephants are going across Sri Lanka. I thought that was some, some of the most beautiful Trek music I'd ever heard. When it came time for John to write the music for it, Last Crusade, John said, you know, this is a father-son story, so I'm going to write music that might be more appropriate for a less action-oriented picture about a father and a son. So he did very intimate, subtle themes for the indie father relationship. Yeah, perfect time for that. I thought at first that could be a bit earlier, but that's fine. You like that between them? Oh, it's wonderful. It's a real statement of his theme. This is a great score. This, this for me is my favorite of all three Raiders. Easily my favorite of all three Raiders. You know, the, the one with the, I think it's the, it's, it's the deepest score and it's the most evocative of, of relationship. I think I like it. There's a relationship in it. Thirty-six wins, little tenuto tongue, every eighth note. I was talking the other day about the beginning of The Last Crusade, where we have Indiana Jones as a teenager. And I was thinking about this thing, and I think that sequence is actually about four minutes, because I've recently looked at it musically. And it's got, in that four minutes I counted, it's like 55 musical sync points. And what strikes me about that sequence also is that, that we're moving all the time. We're moving on the horse, moving in the car, moving on the train. All this action is taking place as we're traveling. And all the result of some writer's wacky imagination, well, we'll have a train with snakes, you know, in the first two minutes. And that's the whole spirit of all those films. But the score is probably very close to being two hours. The orchestra's playing pretty much all the time, which is wonderful for the music. We have an opportunity where a film will hold that much music, not drown in the process, you know. Um, I haven't ever measured it out, but I know it's, I know it's quite, a few, quite a few notes.
Well, I hear rumors that there will be an Indiana Jones 4. I hope it's going to happen. It would be wonderful because it would be an opportunity to take another romp through the imaginations of George and Stephen, particularly, and their writers. But uh, for me, the experience of doing the trilogy of Indiana Jones has been an important one in the overall stretch of what I've done in, in film. It was a joyous experience doing this, always is with George and Stephen. And the fact that the music that I can still play it in concerts and that other people still will, will do that from time to time is enormously gratifying to me that people remember it on, 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 on its musical leg, so to speak, which is, I have to say, the result of the happy coincidence that people remember these films so well. Uh, they've been a, a very important experience for me, and I, I look forward very much to, to revisiting all of this in Indiana Jones 4. I think it'll be a very exciting thing to do and, and, and very pleasurable one, certainly.